three. All right. All right, we're back again. Uh, uh, good old Zoom uh, knocked us off, but uh, we have returned. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, he alluded to it, but I, I want to jump in and ask uh, Kurt how he met Amanda uh, Lehman. Uh, she is, uh, like I say, a guitarist, plays with uh, Steve Hackett on a regular basis. Um, and uh, both recorded and live. And uh, tell us a little bit about that, and then we're going to talk about your album. Okay, well, uh, as, as I uh, was talking about before, I got started in social media uh, in the mid-90s. And one of the people that I met in, the, in that time frame uh, was Krista Walhagen, who has been involved with the artwork uh, on three out of four of my records. I mean, and she's got a resume a mile long. Uh, I mean, she's worked like, you know, with people like Whitney Houston on that level, uh, you know, doing things. And uh, in any event, she's just one of those people. She flies in under the radar. You know, uh, but she was friends with Annie Haslam and uh, was, was functioning as their road manager for the tour that uh, Renaissance did with uh, Steve Hackett. This oh, was yeah. like around around 2010, I think. Um, and so, uh, I mean, I was planning to go to the show. And, uh, you know, I'm in touch with Krista, right? And I get a frantic phone call from Krista that the equipment truck had broken down. And could I get down there immediately? uh you know to help them load in uh because they were going to get there like you know at, at, at the last minute and uh so yeah there was that whole fire drill thing you wow. know i got i got involved with uh, this was at the park west uh in in chicago uh, which i had played the with the drifters there uh uh the year before but anyway um so, you know, I'm involved with that. I mean, uh, I actually carried Steve Hackett's guitar into the Park West. Uh, so I'm, that's on my resume too, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, so, you know, after doing that big hustle to get things in, I decided to um, go help myself to the hospitality where the dressing rooms mm -hmm. were. And, and so, and this was in the upstairs uh, you know, area there, and uh, and that's that's where I first ran into Amanda, but I didn't even try to chat her up. I mean, one, I didn't know who she was, you know that that you know at at that point, but um, we definitely made eye contact. But I I had to get out of there because I didn't want to get thrown out of there because I wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, mm -hmm and everything so that was how i first met her uh but it was uh we, you know we we were friends on facebook uh and i i don't i did not tell her that story until recently i i shared that uh the first meeting with her but we uh you know had connected up uh on, on facebook uh and I think it was uh, relax. Nothing's under control. I was, you know, I had uh, this idea because I, I originally was the one singing that uh, that coda, you yeah. know, in there. But no, you know, it's it's like uh, it needed needed something a little a little bit more special than me uh, to do that, and so. Uh, you know, I got her involved with that, and it was just like so ridiculously good. Uh, and I tell you, uh, I, I don't think it took her but a couple of days to think about it. You know, what what she wanted to do with that. I gave her um, a general description of what I wanted. I gave her the chart. I gave her the lyrics, and a few days later, bang, it's done. Um, She's, you know, totally self-contained uh, with what she's doing. Um, 
and it, it worked out it worked out really well um and then um you know she's she's got this um uh, you know clearly she comes to this it's not just what you know she's done with with steve hackett you know she's she's a musician oh, uh, and a, and, you know yeah. a writer uh, uh, you know, she's very musical uh, in her own right. And, uh, you know, she just, she knows what to do, yeah. uh, you know, and goes in a, you know, seems to go in a straight line for it. Uh, and so with uh, for, uh, Forever, uh, I, had, I, it was, what happened with, with Forever was is that, uh, you know, we had the, ry the, the rhythm track, you know, we had, and uh, the keyboard player Jim, Jim Gully, who did a lot of the, those those soundscape thing uh, shows with me, um, he had come up with this uh, string part. And when I got Billy Sherwood involved, he basically uh, took over the string part. He, uh, you know, and turned it into that like Beach Boys on Acid. Uh, yeah thing you know that 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 billy did with that and um uh, so you know what amanda took the cue from that and she basically turned it into like a canon you know where mm -hmm. there it's you know the yeah. inter intertwining uh you know melodies uh going on and uh i mean that's her invention you know she uh she just she just knows what to do with that 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 kind of thing and uh uh you don't hear a lot of that uh that 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 kind of treatment going on these days and so i mean i was thrilled uh with what she did with that and then you know she uh her 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 newest cd um you know it's like i'm when i'm listening to it um uh, I can see that there's parallels with the narratives that 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 she comes up with uh, to the one you know. I mean, I I very much relate uh, to her as a writer. You know, we seem to uh, go to a, a, a different we, place. And we tried to bring her on here as a you know uh, uh, a interviewee and she just her schedule is so busy uh, well i think she's up in scotland i mean she went she and her husband you know <laughs> she she had she that is a rolling stone that gathers no moss uh she's she she's you know, always moving. working on something yeah yeah um but uh i have talked to her there's a song uh, that, uh that's going to be on the next cd um I have a 95 year old father uh, that lives with us and uh, he's pretty deep uh, into the throes uh, of Alzheimer's, uh, you know, dementia and uh, right. came up with a song or, you know, writing mm -hmm. about it. It's, and it's called living eulogy. A mm -hmm. um, lot of it was written sitting across uh, the kitchen table uh, from him. But uh, we've talked about that one, and that's that's one I'm in, 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 intending to uh, involve her with. This is this is that's that's this is totally her bailiwick, uh, you yeah. know, this kind of a thing. Uh, so there will be more, you know. Yeah. Knock on for yeah. knock on for Micah, uh, <laughs> you know. We'll we'll do some more. Well, let's talk about your album. Um, happiness uh, starts things out. And definitely, um, I felt that yes energy all throughout that song. Um, talk a little bit about it. It's very positive, but at the same time, it covers some deep ground. And uh, tell us a little bit about that one as sort of um, the one that kicks everything off. Well, I think that... Um... I was I was not in a great place uh and you know was was hanging out with an old friend and uh and I was told to knock it off 
you know, uh, mm. happiness is a decision. Uh, you know, yeah. I, bas I basically uh, stole some of the words, you know, from from that conversation and, you know, made it rhyme. <laughs> and yeah. uh, that's where that song comes from. And uh, I think, you know, the reason that the the words resonated with me that I adapted um, is because that's who I am. You know, that's, yeah. uh, you know, it is a decision and, you know, you got to own that stuff. And, um, you know, it just seemed like a really good subject uh, to try and expand upon. Um, you know, some of this stuff, uh, you know, it just, it comes out of thin air. Um, you know, I don't know that it's, it's all like a literal thing you know, coming out of me, but it's, it's, it's me, you know, one trying to make stuff rhyme, uh, but, it, but, but to stay uh, in the general, uh, you know, theme of things. And in some cases, I just let my subconscious go yeah. uh, and try not to edit myself, uh, you know, too much uh, with that. But yeah, happiness uh, was not a hard song to write because I did have a specific, uh, you know, inspiration, motivation uh, for writing it. Some songs, you know, I don't. Uh, I got to work at it, uh, you know, a little, a little bit more. But that's that's where that came from. And that's uh, Michael Sherwood uh, is one playing keyboards on that. Um, and uh, bass player Scott Williams, uh, he's playing upright on that, by the way. Uh, okay. if you, if you go back and listen to that, it's got a yeah. very different, uh, feel to it than, uh, what you're usually going to see. Uh, and the drummer Len Szymanski, uh, on that, he had, uh, uh, in general, you know, he had a lot to do, uh, with the arrangements, uh, rhythmically, uh, speaking, uh, and, you know harmonically uh to an extent uh as well but you know len is definitely he's an idea guy and so if there was you know uh you know anything that you're hearing you know he definitely had something to say about that and then you know with happiness too uh kathy mills who you know i've i've known forever uh as well i mean uh you know she uh, she has a big voice. And mm -hmm. uh, when it got to the end of the song, uh, the second half of that song, it kind of goes into a double time thing, which almost resembles gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, yeah. the kind of groove really. that was going on. And so it occurred to me, you know, to turn her loose, you know, and, and turn it into kind of, a, a, you know, and let her scat and, uh, you know, do whatever she wanted to with that. And it worked out really well. And is in, in fact, um, you know, normally in that play out part, I would have just taken a solo. But I specifically did not want to cover up, yep. you know, what 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 she was doing. You know, I wanted that to to really stand out. And uh, you know, I, it was again, it was just a, a hunch, a notion that it would work. And yeah, she hit a home run uh you know with that michael you know <laughs> he's so funny uh he was so funny i th i think he sent me like 17 layers have fun you know <laughs> you know sort through it um he's all over it um he was so much fun um and uh there was one other track uh, that he and Billy uh, were both on again. Uh, that would be, um, Will I Ever Pass This Way Again? Um, that's another good song. Very good song. Um, so, yeah, that's Billy playing uh, bass and drums uh, on that. And, and Michael playing uh, keyboards. And Kathy again, you know, way over the top uh, again with the... Uh, you know, that play out uh, groove on that. She's, uh, 
she made a wonderful uh, you know contribution on on that one but that yeah that's like uh it's like a made for t that that's like a soundtrack you know looking for a movie um you know the rise and fall of a, yeah. of a relationship in, in like five minutes and you don't see it coming uh, mm -hmm. with that and uh you know she just took over uh you know, on, on that. I mean, she totally closed that deal uh, on that thing. And then, um, you know, we've got. Uh, you know, I, I get the, the order of the songs around trouble is actually the first song. And that song deals with a lot of problems, but you do it in a way that um, is, I don't know if I want to say entertaining, but um, enlightening. You want to? Well, go ahead. I think you know that. Um, I think you know everybody, you know, uh, you know encounters bad people. Uh, yeah. You know, along the way, and uh, you know what doesn't kill you just makes you stronger, and uh, you move on. And I think that uh, uh, you know it, it, the the narratives on this record are all over the map. You know, there yeah. there there is no like one narrative uh, with this thing. But what I tried to do is another story about the the record. Okay, the last song, last track on there is the road beyond, and the road beyond. Um, is a live track uh that's from 2007 our our uh appearance at the electro music uh, festival in philadelphia um uh, jim and i jim gully and i and uh, it, it was like it I, I had already released outer worlds and so it wasn't going to get on outer worlds and that was pretty much the end of the line for me doing that kind of thing so it, it's really just kind of sat around since then. And then in re-listening to it, uh, when I was doing the Stone stuff, it occurred to me that this was the perfect bookend to, uh, will I ever pass this way again? You know, and it's, that's like, uh, again, you know, a soundtrack looking for a movie that to me sounded like the kind of, uh, a, a, a depiction of the emotional stuff that came out of, you know, will I ever pass this way again? And it's got a nice little resolution to it, you know, after you endure the 17 minutes, uh, you know, of that, there's a nice resolution to it, which I thought, okay. And uh, so there's a little spoken word piece that we added to it at the end, which I think kind of encapsulates all the different Sturm and Drang going on, you know, with, with everything that led up to it on that CD. And that, you know, I, I think is, is the happy ending, uh, yeah. you know, to, to all that, a little bit of, you know, acceptance and, and, and resolution and uh, a way to go about your business. Uh, but there's other, you know, uh, I had Annie Carlson uh, was on uh, I'm in love with that dream, you know, helping me out with that, uh, you know, and I mean, she's got this whole little quirky lilt uh, to her voice, you know, that, that I, that I really, uh, and she, I mean, she, she does a lot of different things. We we've, we've done, we've worked together uh, on some things. It, it, it's great having friends, you know, uh, to participate in this stuff. I'll tell you about some of the other people that were on this uh, record too. Jim Gully, who I've mentioned, uh, and Len, I go back, uh, I've done every kind of bit of work you can do with those guys. Uh, Kathy, I go back with uh, a lot of ways. Um, on uh, uh, Relax, Nothing's Under Control, uh, you've got uh, Dennis Johnson, uh, who was the original bass player with Survivor. Uh, he was also the original bass player with a group called Chase, uh, mm -hmm. 
Get It On. It was their big hit, but that they came out around the same time as Chicago and Blood, Sweat and Tears. Um, but half the, the, the band got killed in a plane crash. So that mm-hmm. that kind of stopped things uh, for that band. But, you know, Dennis was somebody that uh, I befriended going back to the 80s. And uh, he was great to work with. He was on uh, Dennis DeYoung's first solo record, too. I mean, he's done a million things. Uh, we had John Abbey. Uh, uh, he was on uh, Forever. Uh, we had Chris Ussery, uh, studio guy from, from, from this area. Uh, oh God. I got to remember, uh, Corey Hans, uh, uh, is, is doing, uh, the, the backups on, uh, will I ever pass this way again? That, uh, again, kind of beach boy, uh, like, uh, bridge. Uh, in that, and uh, we got Jeff Abbott uh, is is playing some piano uh, on relax. Nothing's under control. He's he's a one man wrecking crew. He does Ooh. clinics like like all over the world. Uh, Amazing. Uh, Man, uh, you've been connected with some fantastic talent. Um. I miss I'm missing one. I said John uh, John Abbey uh, plays with John Cale. Oh yeah. Uh, you know that's uh, you know he's on. Uh, I did maybe I did say him. He's he's on uh, forever. Uh, but yeah, I you know it's like, I mean you, you look at me. I mean I'm not a young man, uh, so I've I've had a lot of time to make a couple of yeah. friends uh you know along the way and that that you know and that that's what it is it's 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 about doing the work Mm -hmm. and yeah a lot of the work is you know leading up to this was very you know garden variety stupid work um but it was because and i will tell you where my writing comes from at least uh harmonically uh was from doing the black tie work because i was force fed uh, a diet of like, you know, uh, great American songbook, things, okay. things like that. And yeah. I mean, growing up, I always hated that music because it was always being presented like on the Lawrence Welk show or, yeah. or, 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 or the Liberace's of the world. And your parents, your parents music. Or, yeah. Yeah. And, and so it was the presentation that didn't work for me, but what happened, it was a funny thing happened is when I was forced to learn, you know, absorb this music for the work that I was doing. Um, all of a sudden, when I broke it down to what it was, uh, wow, this is this is ear candy. This is this is good, you know. And then all of a sudden, I made the connection that a lot of this music that I liked, like Beach Boys, Brian Wilson specifically, uh, or even the Beatles, you know, the the influence. Uh, that they had, uh, and certainly George Martin uh, really did right by them. Uh, you know, nurturing. Uh, you know what 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 they were up to. Uh, that that's probably as big an influence on me uh, as Yes or, or or anybody else, uh, because there's. Uh, it's just fundamental, fundamentally good songwriting. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm about that, you know, trying to, uh, you know, I, I don't think I could contrive uh, an epic piece of music. I mean, I, I usually have a, an idea in mind, you know, what you want to say and, and you're, you're, you're trying to find, find a way to, to, to say it. Uh, I could never do a tales of topographic oceans at that yeah, it's a tough one. Um, but I think you did a very good job with I'm in love with that dream. I, I heard it, at least I did, because I'm a Jimi Hendrix fan. I heard a lot of that influence and I, I put that in the review. I don't know if you have you ever heard that song of Merman I should 
turned to be nineteen eighty. Sure. And I not no, you didn't copy it or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But I could sense a little bit of influence, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, there's a lot of bit of influence. I mean, I was huge Jimi Hendrix fan. Um and I think, you know, that uh another little tip for the future, um I bought uh I bought a pedal which is a clone of the old uh Univibe. Yeah, well. Uh uh, you know, pedal. And I, I'm I'm planning on writing something in in that vein. But you know, going back to your review mentioning the the Hendrix thing, that was a love song. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you if you go back and you look at the, at the words uh, to that, they're literally they're 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 going off. Uh, you know, Atlantis is sinking, and they're they're go, they're walking off into uh, and swimming around together. He's talking to her. That's the the whole yeah. thing. So I think I think uh, you know it's masked. You know, in you know the uh, you know the other brilliance you know, that was, that was going on, History, but you know, that yeah. was, that was a, that was a dialogue. And, uh, and yeah, you, a lot of people don't even know about that song or you know, it's not a big hit of his, but for me, it, it definitely, is. I mean, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely up there. Well, that um, album is my favorite. No, uh, yeah. That, that, that whole album. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, that, I think that was his Sergeant Pepper uh, for my money. Yeah, uh, you know, and yeah, his his approach, um, and I mean, he he had the help of a very good engineer. Was it was that Eddie Kramer? I think so. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, but yeah, he had a really good en en engineer to help you know facilitate because I'm sure Hendrix was telling him what he was what he was going for. How do we do this? And uh, but that. Um, you know that that touches on the ambient, you know, electronic, you know, kind of things. Uh, and I, I will tell you a little story about my introduction to that was when I was 15 years old, wow. and playing with that little little band down the street. And I had a job working for the Chicago Public Library downtown, and they knew I was in a little band. So they, um, the my boss says, you know, we're having. Uh, they were doing like an employee awards banquet thing. We're having a little talent show. We want okay. you to come and do. We want you to come and do some Elvis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like the ham and me. I'm there. Yeah, sure, no problem. Except that one, I didn't sing. I wasn't singing at the time. Two, we didn't know any Elvis. But <laughs> I said yes anyway, right? Yeah, so, yeah. You never so turn I, something down. Never. You know, you'll figure, so, you'll figure out some way to. You know. So I go, I go back to the band and I'm saying, okay, we got this opportunity. <laughs> nobody, nobody was willing to do it. <laughs> so I, was, I was basically all by myself on this, and I had just happened to uh, acquire. It was like it had to be like from the 1950s, but one of the original Echoplexes was oh, sound wow. on sound. And I basically showed up with my little Gibson combo amp, uh, that Echoplex and, and my little guitar. And I, I did like about five minutes of, of like a soundscape, me just playing with myself and having fun. And I'm, get, I'm like, in one eye, I'm seeing my boss giving me the stink eye. What are you doing? And and then I'm looking at my parents sitting at the table, like slinking further down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was hilarious, but you know I didn't care, you know. Yeah, it's, you it's didn't like, run away from it. That's the important. Thing. Well, and that's you and that's have, really you could easily have done that, but yeah. Um, well, I think that that's the thing, you know, about being a musician, is that. You know, you're going to be taking a lot of pies to the face. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't enjoy eating pie, uh, it, it's it's hard because you just have to keep going and, and not stop, not quit. And I think, 
you know, my problem was I was kind of uh, for the, you know, maybe longer than I needed to be uh, a rudderless ship, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of navigating, but I never stopped, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with that. And I think that that's the thing uh, that, that makes all this other stuff happen. Um, yeah. Stay involved. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this because um, we got that little timer again. Um, are you going to be touring uh, the album? Um, I don't see that happening. Um, uh, you know, I, I've, I've already lived in the back of my car. Um, you've had and, enough of that. Yeah. You know, but I think that, uh, what, what the plan is, is, is to produce, uh, a streaming event, uh, oh. a really, a really good one. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, ultimately turn that into a DVD uh, and see what opportunities we can create, one-off opportunities uh, with that, uh, you know, festivals, you know, opening for so-and-so. Uh, I really don't want to go back to playing clubs. Uh, yeah. You know, I think that uh, I've had enough of being in the business of selling alcohol. Yeah. Um, you know, you just, you just want to do things, uh, where, where you can be musical, yeah. uh, you know, and, uh, but yeah, there, there will definitely, you know, I think, you know, that's the future, you know, is, 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 is streaming and, uh, you know, doing what we can, uh, to create fun opportunities, uh, with that. I, I just, uh. Right. I wish I could and say that, that there was going to be a touring thing, but no, that's, um, that's all right. Well, and it sounds like you're starting to work on a new album already. Any oh, other, yeah. any other uh, collaborative efforts you want to talk about? Or well, I think that the the people that I've established, you know, relationships with, you know, that that's all on the table. Uh, you know, and, but I mean, I I've got a really uh, and, uh, I'm certain that that will continue, but, yeah. um, you know, I've got a, you know, the, the local people here too, uh, are solid, you know, I, yeah. I've, the, you know, the, Chicago's full you know, of talent. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, no man is an Island. And I mean, the, yeah. you know, if I don't have friends, uh, you know, helping me out, this thing doesn't happen. Uh, you know, but it, you know, it's like the cost, yeah. Of, of doing something like this that's why it took seven years yeah you know you've you've got to you know it's it and yes life gets in the way uh of things but um you know it, it won't take seven years um for the next one uh because we're already working on it um uh, you know we're going to keep going i mean it's it's we're only given so much time and uh i mean i'm definitely about doing more uh and you know create but it's really it's about creating those bucket list opportunities uh at, at this point and this is you know also a bucket list you know opportunity you know having people be interested in in hearing about it uh i mean you know i was a 15 year old kid you know getting baked in my bedroom you know <laughs> listen to yes songs you know uh, you know, I would have never conceived, uh, you know, of how I would, you know, get to a place where I'm doing what I'm doing now. And I mean, that's, that's really, I think, uh, for me, that's an end in itself, you know, is uh, doing what you want to do with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you one more real quick question. Be, I'm just afraid of this thing cutting us off. Is there anything else that you wanted to cover that I haven't talked about? Or uh, haven't talked about? You've covered a lot of ground, and I appreciate your time doing that, but go ahead. Um, well, I, th I think, you know, if, if people are interested in the music, um, it's available just about everywhere. Um, but, you know, the, the first stop, 
I hope people will make would be to my website. Uh, that's uh, www.kurtmichaels.net. Uh, and, you know, all of my, my, my whole catalogs there, you can stream as much as you like, listen to whatever you like uh, over there. But we are offering um, uh, not only, you know, to take plastic, but uh, we're set up now with PayPal. Uh, so for people that are comfortable with PayPal, more comfortable with that, uh, that is available. We have a name your own price option on there, you know, uh, so we're hoping to give people, you know, a good value for what they want. But um, there's other uh, avenues available as well. Uh, Amazon, uh, you know, I, I could, uh, it's available there. And for people in the United States, Canada, uh, UK, and Japan, uh, it's uh, available on Amazon Prime, uh, which that that's a really big development here because, you know, I. I sent packages, you know, all over this planet. Uh, and I mean, you know, the postage, you know, to Europe was like 17 bucks, yeah. you know? Um, so, uh, and I always was thinking there's no way these people are going to spend that money, uh, you know, to, to, to buy, buy a CD. And uh, so my label, that's uh, melodic uh, revolution records. Uh they worked out a distributorship thing. So now uh, for the people there, it's it's available on Amazon Prime and they can get it uh, without having to pay the postage if they're are if they're already, you know, on Amazon Prime. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, and there's a, there, there's other um, websites on there, too. But the Bandcamp is another big one. Uh, yeah. And the so, Bandcamp Fridays, too. Uh, for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, I want to, I definitely want to thank you before this cuts off, but thank you very much, Kurt, for spending some time here. Um, we'll, we're definitely do it again. I, I okay. love to review your next album and uh, hope um, everything goes well and uh, great to hear you're uh, connecting with Amanda again. That's going to be good. Uh, we also be connecting with um, with uh, the rest of the people you, you worked on on this album. Yeah, like, like with um, Billy and and people like that. I, I bet Billy's he, good. He's another guy that just never wants to stop either. It seems like he's always involved in a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's just. Uh, I mean, I've been working with him since two thousand eight, so. Um, I mean, if the only thing that's going to stop it is if he's too busy. Uh, but I mean, you know, we get we get along. Uh, he's he's a good guy. I I, yeah, I really yeah. like I really liked his brother. Uh, yeah. You know, he was he was the one uh, that really, uh, you know, was the first one really to step up, and I'll always be uh, grateful for that too. But yeah, Billy, uh, we had uh, Tom Brisson was on uh, the last one. Uh, no, no. Uh, but he's a little busy right now. Yeah, <laughs> you could say. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, they're they're definitely, uh, they're, you know, they're they're out there, and uh, he's in that mode, uh, you know, right now. And right now, Billy is in that mode. Uh, you know, yeah. yes, yeah. You know, uh, so it's it's not not easy. Uh, it's it's hard to hit a moving target. But uh, I, I do plan uh, on saying hello uh, the, 